Today we're getting busy in the kitchen with biscuits. We're gonna be making some more biscuit recipes. Welcome to Meals with Maria. I know these are some of the favorite recipes out there on the internet and I wanted to bring you something new and something worthy of trying. I have three recipes that are absolutely delicious, knock your socks off good, super easy, inexpensive, and can be made starting with just one can of delicious biscuit dough. I'm so excited to share these with you, enjoy. We're gonna start off by making easy and incredible cinnamon roll bites from all recipes. These are so good, they really are incredible. It's actually the second time that I've made them and the kids requested them for the first day of school. Now, the recipe says to use one package of sweet Hawaiian biscuit dough. I'm actually using honey butter and I think you could just use regular too if you have it. The ones at Aldi are actually a lot cheaper. I just happened to grab these ones at Walmart. And you know, I'm actually struggling to open these today, but it's not making something with biscuits if the thing doesn't scare you when it pops open. It's kind of like a rite of passage. You just want to remove all of the rolls and then you're gonna quarter them. And then the recipe says to use a Ziploc bag, so that's what I'm doing, but you could totally just use a regular bowl and skip using something that's disposable as well. And you just place all of those quarters right in there. And here you'll do as I say and not as I do because I did it in the wrong order. You do want four tablespoons of melted unsalted butter, but you can put that off to the side. In the bag, you wanna add one tablespoon of cinnamon or as much as you like and one third a cup of sugar. And then you're just gonna shake that around and really coat those biscuit pieces in that cinnamon sugar. I made a mistake and I added my butter first and you know what, it turned out fine, it turned out great. But I think that like they got a lot stickier when I did it this way and it was a lot easier to evenly coat all of the biscuits when they weren't covered in butter first. So the butter was still in there and like I said, it tasted great. It just took me a little bit longer and I felt less confident in what I was doing. So ideally you wanna pour those into an eight by eight pan once you're done coating them in the cinnamon sugar and then pour four tablespoons of melted butter right over the top of that. You wanna bake these at 375 degrees for 22 minutes until golden brown. And in the meantime, we can make our icing. In a medium bowl, mix together two tablespoons of softened butter, one cup of powdered sugar, two tablespoons of milk, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And you'll notice I'm using light cream because that's what I had on hand and it turned out great. I mean, you can always sub cream for milk in most cases and it's gonna be even better than the original. And then you just wanna mix that really well until you get all the lumps out and that there's no pieces of powdered sugar or butter kind of floating around in there. And I was able to just do this by hand. It worked pretty well. And it makes a delicious, delicious icing. And I'm always like so surprised at how easy it is just to make icing at home. I'm like, ooh, that icing that you get in the package when you make the cinnamon rolls. Yeah, it's, it's pretty simple. And you can see how nicely these cook up all cinnamony and sugary and buttery, and they really fluff up and make a full casserole. And then you can just top those right away with that icing and it kind of melts over the top of it. It is so incredibly delicious. I also love that there is lots and lots of icing to go around because I feel like when you get the little packets with the cinnamon rolls, it's just never enough. This is a nice spread of icing for the entire thing. Like I said, I served this to the boys on their first day of kindergarten and second grade. I served it with some sliced up kiwi. They absolutely loved it. And I'm sure I'll be requested to make it again soon. And I won't mind because it's a great excuse for me to have something delicious as well. All right, for this next one, we are making either another breakfast option or a snack option, or you know, even lunch. These are delicious anytime. They are mini bagel bites. And if you have been to Dunkin' Donuts anytime recently, you would know that they have them on the menu. And my son, Julian, who's five, will often choose the bagel bites over a donut when we go through the drive-thru, which is very sweet of him. So I figured I would make some for at home to make easy breakfast for back to school. 
We're again starting with one package of the Southern, it's supposed to be like the Southern style biscuits or the home style biscuits, not the flaky ones. Those would not be good in this. And then you just want to rip them in half and make them into circles. You could go through the whole process of cutting them nicely and neatly and using a rolling pin, but I found that just using my fingers was absolutely fine and super easy. And I, I liked it better just doing that because I felt like it just took a lot less time. You'll end up with 16 circles of dough and then you just want to slice up some cream cheese. So I just have like this nice block of cream cheese here. I do recommend using a block. I bet if it was frozen, it would be even easier for you. Mine just came out of the refrigerator. So it was a little bit gooier, but it worked out just fine. And I'm cutting this into blocks, maybe a little bit larger than a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half. It's really not a ton of cream cheese, but it's the perfect amount for these little bites. I'm gonna cook these in the air fryer, but you could totally do them in your regular oven. And I have my air fryer sheet and I'm just putting some parchment paper over it to make sure that it's easy cleanup, super simple. And then you just wanna take your little disc and wrap it right around your tablespoon and or teaspoon and a half of cream cheese and make little perfect balls. Make sure that it's nice and sealed at the bottom because you don't want the cream cheese going everywhere. And then we're just gonna top these with a little bit of scrambled up eggs. So just have one egg here, it's gonna make an egg wash. And I'm gonna put that right over the top of your little bagel bite things. And then we're gonna sprinkle on some everything bagel seasoning as much or as little as you like. And this is also optional. Like if you like plain ones, don't put the everything bagel seasoning on. My husband, he's like a salt guy. So I could totally make him salt bagels with just like some finishing salt right on the top of that and he would really enjoy it. Think minced onion, you could do onion ones. You can really do sesame seed ones. Anything that you like, go ahead and make it your own. When you compare the price of making these at home to what they cost at Dunkin' Donuts, it's pennies on the dollar. You can get the biscuits at Aldi for a little over a dollar, somewhere between a dollar and a dollar fifty, depending on where you are or how you're getting them. And then you have one egg that's next to nothing, maybe 10 cents. And then some cream cheese, again, between dollar, dollar fifty, two dollars, something like that. You're not even using all of it. You're using like half of the cream cheese block, maybe. And you don't have to put anything over the top of them. So I'm looking at maybe $3 here, maybe a little more, maybe a little less for 16 of them. And I'm pretty sure they're like $3 for two of them at Dunkin' Donuts. So you're getting eight times as many for the same cost. And these freeze up great. I ended up just freezing mine. We had some the day of obviously because they were so yummy. Putting them in the freezer and then microwave them for 30 seconds and then pop them in the toaster oven or just in your regular oven for three minutes at 350. And they turn out so good. The key is putting them in the microwave first to kind of melt that cream cheese that's in the middle, but then they're like an anytime snack, like a to-go thing that is super simple to do anytime that you just need to grab something really quickly. I air fried mine at 350 degrees for nine minutes. And if you're baking them in the oven, you can cook them at 350 degrees for 12 to 15 minutes. And they turn out delicious and golden brown. Some other ideas on this, if you have flavored cream cheese, you can go ahead and use that too. So if you had like a chive or a scallion, or you could even add some extra cheese or scallions to your cream cheese to make it even better. So there's so many different ways and options that you can make these and make them your own. And it's kind of endless and it's kind of delicious and I'm kind of obsessed. So I'm so very, very excited to have these uh, in the freezer. I'll probably be making them regularly because they are going to be requested often in my house. And I figured I'd give you a behind the scenes look at the dish pile up in my house, real life, me trying the bagel bites. I never do this, so I figured we'd try it. This next recipe is inspired from TikTok. It is an air fried pepperoni pizza bombs. I'm just starting off with a handful of pepperoni. I guess I can't say exactly how much and cutting it up into quarters. And if you have like the mini pepperonis, those are perfect too. So whatever you have on hand, if you have like salami, slice that up. If you have turkey, if you have bacon, you can put whatever you want in your pizza bombs. They don't have to be pepperoni, uh, but they're still gonna turn out great. So just to slice that up and then you'll see that I have string cheese. Now, if you have like shredded mozzarella, that's gonna be fine too. Or if you have like teeny little pearls of mozzarella, that's also yummy. 
but I was looking in my fridge and I was like, I don't even have shredded mozzarella. What am I gonna do? Hello, string cheese. This is perfect. This is the perfect thing to use this for. And we're just gonna end up cutting that into little cubes or little pieces too. If you noticed on the last recipe, I used 16, I ended up making 16 like little bombs for the mini bagels. Same thing is gonna go for the pizza. It's gonna end up with 16. So I was like, I need to slice up 16 pieces of mozzarella cheese. And I think I ended up only getting 15. So we actually, surprise, added cream cheese to one of the pizza bombs, but you'll never know which one. So like I said, for this recipe, I'm also going to break the biscuits in half and make a disc out of it. And then I'm gonna put my pepperoni and my cheese right into the center of the disc and close it up just like we did with the bagel bombs. I did find, I'm doing it backwards this time, but I did find that if you put the pepperoni in first and then the cheese on the bottom, they like they come out rounder for some reason. Uh, so go ahead, do pepperoni first and then cheese and you're gonna be in good shape. So in the original recipe that I saw, they were kind of all in a bunch like this. And I was like, oh, I like the idea of like a pull apart bread. But now that I cook them, I would not recommend this because it was hard to get the insides cooked, especially like if you're gonna cook it in the oven, you can air fryer, no matter what you're gonna do, that middle part that's stuck together is gonna be harder to cook. So if I were to do it again, I would separate it out just like with the mini bagel bites. And then this is something I would change too. I'm putting Parmesan cheese, a tablespoon of Parmesan cheese in with a couple tablespoons of melted butter, a teaspoon of dried parsley, garlic powder, and onion powder. And this is delicious, right? But I wouldn't put it on before you cook it because once I put that on there and it had all that Parmesan on it, in the air fryer actually kind of burned. It got brown on the top. It still tasted delicious but this is gonna taste just fine if you put it over the top after you cook it. So next time I would separate those balls out and I would put on this creamy Parmesan buttery garlic mixture on after I cooked my pizza bombs and they would turn out 10 times better, I swear. I air fried these for 10 minutes at 350 degrees and then I had to cook them for kind of like another 10 minutes because the insides weren't cooking. Like I said, we finally got that fully cooked there and we're in good shape, but see how brown it is on the top? They still were delicious and like I said, I would make them again. I would just do all of the other processes that I just talked about. So I wanna share this with you because these are still great biscuit recipes, like it's so good. And I lived and I learned and I went through the trials for you on the TikTok recipe. So now you don't have to live through that. You can just follow my instructions and you're gonna have amazing, amazing pizza bombs. These are especially good. Again, you can freeze them, you can just microwave them for a minute and then pop them in the toaster as a good little snack. They're a great after school snack. They are a great football food or great something to make ahead so that you can just cook up something quickly in the evening time if you're in a rush. To try and like save them, I added some extra butter over the top because butter does makes everything better, right? And then sprinkled on some Parmesan cheese and it's like you would never know. It's so delicious, so good. And like I said, the flavors were all there. I've also seen recipes where people added like a little teaspoon of sauce right into the bomb and that sounds delicious, but I just warmed up some sauce on the side to dip it in. Like I said, these are make your own, do what you will with them. You can see, look at that ooey gooey cheese in there and that pepperoni. They were absolutely fantastic. My husband was like, you made these yourself? These are so good. I'm like, yep, that's right. That's me, just making all this amazing food. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. I hope you got some great biscuit ideas. Make sure to grab some of those biscuits when they're on sale or they're cheap or you get them at Walmart or Aldi because they are a great thing to keep around and make some last minute stuff like this. And it's great to do some meal prep too and pop those things in the freezer. So like I said, I hope you got, you got some great ideas. Make sure to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. I'm making three amazing budget fun cooking videos a week and I would be so happy to have you here. To keep the inspiration going, make sure to click on this next biscuit video right here. I'm gonna make three more amazing recipes with biscuit dough.